Hi everyone, welcome to the House of Relief. Today we're gonna talk about discrimination at work, and my guest is Sally. Hey Lily, good to be with you again. Yes, last time I talked to you probably around 2013. Yeah. My God, hot! I'm so hot here, and this is like hot air on my glasses. Okay, let's go on. Um, before we talk about discrimination at work, right? Mm -hmm. I have this question I want to ask you. Yeah. Recently, I went for a job interview. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same company, but they, they are different branch, right? So I went to one branch, do the stage one interview. Mm -hmm. I didn't get through. And then I went to the second branch. I do the stage one interview, stage two interview, and then they send me to a pre-employment medical checkup, right? And then after the checkup, everything went well. So I passed everything. Yep. But my gender is being reviewed at that point. Ah. And at that point, I'm pretty much thinking maybe when they ask me to go for the pre-employment medical checkup, I'm gonna get the job because they have to pay hundred dollars. Yep. So since my gender is being reviewed at my pre-employment medical checkup, I'm thinking, now I didn't get the job. Right. Is it possible I'm being discriminated? It's hard to say, to be honest, on that information, unless they've told you why you didn't get it. Okay. Um, outright, um, then it's very difficult. So if they've sent you for a medical checkup, unless if they have said to you, well, we're down to two people and we're giving them both medical checkups, then mm -hmm. that could, uh, then it would be harder to prove. But if they've just said, oh, look, you're the last candidate and we just have to do the formality, it may be easier. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, it's tricky without having the specific information. So in that suggestion, I, I think an approach might be just go back and say, oh, look, I'm disappointed I didn't get the job. Could I get some feedback? And look, it might not prove anything. Yeah. There are, uh, whilst there is well-known discrimination against all sorts of people, including trans and gender diverse, mm. very few employers are, are in a way silly enough to say, well, we're not going to hire you because you're transgender. They'll just say, oh, well, there was a better candidate. Yeah. Um, but um, And I cannot do much because at this point. But I want to ask yeah. you this because it makes me feel much better. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> because you know when you're applying jobs, sometimes yeah. you feel like, oh my God, is this the thing that they, they choose not to employ me, do you know? Yeah, it's, it, it understandably sits in the back of our mind if we are from a group that can potentially and actually does face discrimination, whether it's trans, whether it's multicultural people of colour and of course intersections thereof, Yeah, um, it can really sit in our mind. So it can be, you know, it happens, and I totally affirm that, but unless you've got exact details, it can be hard to prove. And there was a situation in New South Wales some years ago where, believe it or not, a recruitment agency, they, did, they were doing fine, they sent along a candidate to an employer for an interview, and believe it or not, the employer came back and said, we want a vanilla woman as, as a, um, to employ them, not just, um, which is a pretty obvious reference to the person's yeah. trans status. And it was easily proven that that was discrimination. But unfortunately, a lot of discrimination can happen one-on-one -on -one, or it's hard to prove or you don't have the evidence, which of yeah. course doesn't make it any easier to deal with. But that's sadly how it can happen. Um, going beyond employment, a friend of mine a few years ago was told by a major publicly funded health clinic, I'd better keep it at that level, quote, we don't treat people like you here, but Ooh. there were no witnesses. Um, so very difficult to yeah. prove. I have another second question, right? So at the job, they actually have what you call a probation period. Yes. So let's say, you know, I got hired and mm -hmm. I do a very good job at the probation period, but they choose not to continue hire me. This gets a little more complex because it also gets into areas of industrial relations law, okay. which um, is something to talk to bodies like the Fair Work Commission about. So again, it would come down to evidence. If, if you ask them, how was my performance? How would you rate it out of 10? And they say eight out of 10 
then you'd have to say, well, that doesn't seem like there's a reason to not continue with me. So you'd have to ask outright a closed question, were there specific reasons you have decided not to continue? Yep. And if they say yes, um, say, what were they? And again, they might, they might not tell you, but at least if you get as much evidence as possible, and my transferent who was at the health clinic eventually pinned the person down after try getting a lot of excuses, um, a trans man, he was very persistent, and in the end he got told what he got told. So the, the underlying theme for, or um, basis for discrimination is unfavourable treatment is okay. the exact legal term. So if someone is you know, s silly enough to say something like, we don't treat people like you or we want a vanilla woman, then that's the sort of thing that will will get it. But sometimes, sadly, it can be hard to prove. Yeah, I know, you know, but I, I, I think what you just said before, you know, I get a very, very good point, you know. Let's say during the provision time, if they didn't continue to hire me, I should ask, like, you know, how's my performance, things like that. Yep. And if my performance is good and they don't hire me, you know, then maybe I can do something, you know. Yeah. I want to ask, like, example, you know, what is the common issue LGBT people will meet at the workplace? Can you give me some example? Sure. So it could be things like, um, you know, what, um, you know, sort of, what did, what did you and your partner do on the weekend, which is also discrimination against wow. single people. And then all of a sudden, if someone is female identified and they're in a relationship with a female, it's like, oh, you know, what happens here? Or trans people being misgendered, I think, is probably the most common one. Um, in a, in a, in inaccurate ideas about um, toilets is probably another one. Um, they would be the sort of things that are discrimination. And there's an important point in all of this, which covers everything, that a critical part of anti-discrimination law, to quote the Victorian law, for example, motive is irrelevant. So some people will say, well, I didn't mean it to be offensive. Doesn't matter. If someone accepts an apology and it never happens again, fine, but it still is technically an employment a breach of the law by people would get things like, oh, you haven't made up your mind yet, those sorts of things. Um, so there's some of the common examples that would happen to people. Can we talk about a bit more about the misgendering? Yes. Because I have a friend, she's a nurse. Yeah. Um, so she write this a long post at Facebook, right? She working at the um, hospital in Canberra, mm -hmm. and some worker is actually misgendering her. Yeah. And she's a transsexual woman. Yes. You know. So, what can she do? Okay. You know, I'm all for giving people a chance to remedy what could be an innocent slip. You know, we sometimes, for example hear a deeper voice, and particularly on a phone, and someone will go, yes, sir, how can yeah. I help you? And if that happens and the trans person says, oh, look, you can help me because I rang about such and such, oh, and also I'm female, I use she, her pronouns, yeah. and the person gets it right thereafter, then let's let it go. But if it keeps going, if a person sounds, say, sarcastic in their tone, oh, sorry, sir, that sort of thing, then you know it's getting willful. So what your friend could do is first talk to her supervisor. Hospital would probably have a human resources, people and culture department, talk to someone there. They could perhaps get some training organised. And in terms of the specific work of their supervisor or HR could have a word with them. And if they don't lift their game, then it gets into standard human resources stuff about one, two, three warnings and you're out. Um, but it's obviously distressing for your friend. So other workers, would be good if she has support or couldn't get that from somewhere else um, until things could improve. And you know, in the end, she would have to go to her state or territory, um, if it's in Canberra, the relevant ACT body. Um, there's, there's one in each state and territory, and there's also the Australian Human Rights Commission, which deals with complaints. OK. Second question. Um, so if someone coming out at work as a trans person... Yeah. Transition, you know. Yes. So, what is the question? Well, uh, <laughs> what they can do. <laughs> yeah. Look, because of the federal anti-discrimination law that's been in for just over five years, since 1st of August 2013, everyone around the country, um, including non-binary, is pretty largely covered. 
So an approach would be to talk to a, tr a trusted colleague or supervisor, or if it's a large organisation, human resources, and say, look, this is where I need to be. There's plenty of information. Um, you can either talk to the state or territory body, talk to a local trans organisation. So a gender agenda in Canberra do great stuff. Transgender Victoria, Gender Centre in Sydney, Trans Folk of WA, lots of them around the country who can advise on um, processes for transition. And that usually involves, I think, doing some sort of training but not mentioning there's a trans person if you've got the time. So let's say someone says, look, I don't need to transition for six months. Do a training session in that time and then when the time comes, people have had time to, say, digest the information. Okay. And then you can, um, you know, have plans to advise people. I think it's often advisable for the person to, say, take a week off at least from the time they leave as their, or say, I'll use the term, the gender they didn't want to be, and come back as their true, affirmed, authentic gender. It just gives people a mental break, and yeah. then they can adjust to changing from Fred to Sally, or Sally to Fred, or Jack to Jack, or yeah. whatever it is. And just let There's people... a good idea. There's a very good idea. Yeah. It can, it can, you know, in fairness, if someone leaves at 5 o'clock Friday and then comes back 9 o'clock Monday, it can be challenging. So giving people time, letting people know, making sure employees have people they can talk to confidentially, such as their own supervisor or... HR, just in case they're not sure. Some people can be embarrassed to ask the trans person themselves questions, and that's fair enough, and sometimes the trans person doesn't want it. But the thing that's critical is to make sure everything's done in conjunction with the person affirming their gender identity. It's got to be their show, so to speak, and so long as they approve of everything and it's done as a team approach, we've, we've had plenty of stories where that's been the case and done incredibly well, and one I remember where that was all done a few years ago, where we got feedback afterwards. People came in the next day and said, wow, they put in all that effort to do it right. What a great place to work. So it's great for everyone. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You, know, shows, you, feel, you, feel, shows pride. you feel welcoming and yes. protected. Well, the trans person feels welcome and everyone else thinks, wow, what a good place to yeah. work. So it shows when you value people, you know, um, the, you know, the universe works, as they say, and yeah. you know, the rest of the employees think, oh, wow, you know, this is a good organisation. Mm -hmm. What about mm -hmm. when you, let's say you know you're being discriminated, right? Like my friend, she's the nurse, right? She yep. talked to her supervisor. Yep. And after she talked to her supervisor, what happened is they decide she is too hard to deal with, she's the difficult one. Oh, so obviously she's being discriminated and she's being laid off. So, who, sh where should she go? Then that's definitely a case for the either the state or territory body, and or the Australian um, body, the Australian Human Rights Commission. And that's a definite no no. To make a, a complaint against someone who raises allegations of discrimination or bullying or that sort of thing, there's very stiff penalties for employees and organisations on that. So if she can, you know, it can be difficult, obviously it's upsetting to face discrimination, but if you can document things as close as possible to the time, you know, when was it said, in whose office or which corridor or whatever it was, as much evidence as you can get, um, so try to document it quickly, um, then that's really helpful to those bodies and it's very hard for people to come back against it, even if it is one-on-one. -on -one. Um, that's really, really important. And then start lodging a complaint process with the relevant state or territory or federal body. So let's say when you start to feel like, OK, the discrimination is going on, and yeah. I probably have to make the complaint, so start collect your evidence. Yes, definitely try to keep the evidence documented. That's the same for whether it's discrimination, harassment, bullying, which can have overlap, of course, and regardless of which group in society you are. Yes, it's upsetting. We don't like having our sense of self violated. But if you can, if you can, perhaps if you need help, talk through a trusted friend who's independent, who can help, might help you just patiently go, OK, what day did that happen? You know, roughly what time, that sort of thing. It's sad that in one sense we need that documentation, but the law is the law, and the more it can be done, the better, and makes it easier as you go through various processes that follow. 
Okay, good, good advice. Last, where can people find information? Yeah, if you look in, you know, hit your search engine for relevant state and territory bodies, so Victorian Equal Opportunity, Human Rights Commission, New South Wales, I think it's the Anti-Discrimination Tribunal, for example. They've got similar names like that. And as I say, nationally, the Australian Human Rights Commission. And there's probably links across all the, we'll say, nine different websites that we have. They're the starting point, and they can then help someone start lodging the complaints they can. It be done online, in writing, via email, all that sort of stuff. So, and there's also um, people, if needed, who can help do interpretation and translation, which may be necessary as well. And in Victoria, the thing that can happen, and I'm not sure of other states and territories, is you can appoint an advocate. So it can be pretty nerve wracking to do it all. And if you just say, look, Sally Goldman from Transgender Victoria, for example, yes. is going to assist me. What usually happens after there's a complaint is the relevant bot, state or territory body will contact the employer and say, look, we've received this. And it goes to conciliation. So it's a very in, more informal process. It's not a court and it's confidential, which obviously many trans and gender diverse people would want. And so if you've got that evidence, but sometimes it can be nerve wracking to face that employer. I, to be honest, I once had a bullying complaint against a former employer. I was somewhat traumatised. I would not sit in the same room as my former manager. Mm. And so that could be arranged. But if you've got an advocate there who can stand up for you, um, could also be a union rep, um, could be someone to consider as well. Sometimes, you know, you know your facts, but it can be a bit intimidating. And if you've got someone there who can communicate strongly on your behalf, then that's also a good thing to find out. But that can vary around the country. So check on your rights there. But I think that can be incredibly helpful. It doesn't have to be a, a lawyer or anything like that. Just someone who can stand up for you and communicate your needs okay. is really helpful. Yeah. Good, 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 good advice. So, so this is just some brief information we give it to you for this episode. Oh, before I start the show, I forgot to introduce. So Sally is representing for Transgender Victoria. Yes, yeah, so I'm media representative for Transgender Victoria. I would say also I'm not a lawyer, but I'm pretty sure everything I'm saying covers some broad brush stroke principles. And you also have a show for from the uh, for 3CR radio as well? That's right. I do a community radio show um, just as myself. If you like, um, it airs first live, noon to one Sunday, coming out of Melbourne on 8.55am, but you can pick it up on the web at 3cr.org.au and it's repeated podcast and it's on demand for a week thereafter but there's so there's some way of listening to it if you're not if you're having a sleep in on sunday which is a fair enough thing to do and yeah it just covers pansexual issues so started out as trans and bi but really looks at anything gender and i want to say always welcome to have anyone's personal story from the rainbow communities on i just i think that telling your story is such a powerful thing and we need more diverse stories i am a middle class, middle cohort of age white trans woman, but I don't have the same story as a person of colour and a, an indigenous person and so on. So the more stories we can have, the better. It's a safe place, no shock jockery. We love your stories. And I do have to warn you, you have to put up with a bad range of Australian classic rock from the 70s and 80s, so you'd better get used to some midnight oil and Australian mm -hmm. crawl and mental as anything. <laughs> no, midnight oil is good. <laughs> Everyone, thank you for watching for this video. We we see you next time. Bye. See you to all the trans and gender diverse people out there. You be yourself, because everyone else is taken. <laughs>